Hello everybody, TW here. Picked up this uh, saw today. So let's see what we got here. Got a couple of these. Set up real quick. Good. Get the uh, jig in it here, get plugged in, and I'll come right back to you. Stand by. I got you zoomed right in here. We got the jig in, it goes in one way. It's got a little step in it for all these little steps. I just had to make sure that all these screws are all tight, everything on the bottom tightened down so that we didn't miss or have a problem with anything. This particular jig was just an eBay jig. I don't know anything about the guy who made it. Um, I put a couple of them in my basket. This guy's was uh, like $12 and he gave me a, a one-time offer, uh, eight bucks with shipping, so it cost me 10 bucks after it was in my basket for a couple days, so I grabbed it. Um, it is designed to be cut, so it will be cut the first time you use it. Um, there is an adjustment here with an Allen wrench and a, and a bolt, so I've got those over there. Um, we're going to cut this down to 1.070, so just under 1.1 inches. And uh, that should give us enough when we resize to be within a few thousandths of the correct overall length that we can trim again on the, on the trimmer after. Um, but we're going to cut these first, we're going to deburr them, then we're going to anneal them, then we're going to size them, then we're going to trim them again. So we'll end up with brass. So let's make our first cut here. We're just going to cut our jig. If you get one of these saws, they, they work pretty good. This is a Harbor Freight Drill Master. This is my third or fourth one. Um, like I said, I, I have one that I use for the 300 blackout, but it doesn't use this clamp. It actually bolts to the plate and I had it all set up. And I did not want to change it. So that's the reason for, for $34 plus I got 25% off. So it was like, what does that work out to 20 something dollars? It was just wasn't, wasn't worth it. I got a bug in my mouth. <laughs> it just wasn't worth it to, uh, to use the one that I had, just pick up another one. Um, they don't last that long. Um, don't overheat them. Don't let it get too hot. Keep it cool. It's got some mounting screws here. I will mount this to a board later on. Um, this is just a preliminary. We're going to set it up. We're going to cut a few and see what we end up with. So I just wanted to bring you along for the ride. Um, we may lose the first few pieces of brass setting it up for length, but uh, hopefully we can do this and have it work out okay. So there's there's how it goes in the in the machine. I'll just push it all the way to the right. You got to use your head because this is a blade and it can cut you uh, wicked bad. So, you know, you use your use your head. Be, be cool about this. Um, with my fingers here, I'm within a half an inch of the blade, but I'm clear of the blade. So that's what this is designed for, to hold it just like that. And then come in here with this hand and, and cut your piece of brass. So let's see what we have for a length. Um, I'm going to guesstimate here as best I can. To try and not waste brass but let's see what I get for an estimated measurement here I set this up by eyeball before and I know I'm pretty close it looks like it looks like I'm gonna be short it looks like it's coming in 1.40 so let's err on the side of safety just from the standpoint of saving brass and let's uh, Let's make this a little bit longer. Let's see what this one gives us. Again, it's just an eyeball, so we, we, we're gonna be wrong, but let's be wrong in the long direction rather than the short. That looks like 160, we want 170. So let's back this off and then back this off a little bit more. Again, I'm just eyeballing. I could be off. Looks like I'm going to have maybe 180. 
So let's let's lock this down so that we don't have any movement with the saw jiggling. And let's cut our first piece of brass. Okay, just that easy. There's our piece of brass. Let's see what we got for a measurement. We've got 1.130, 1 so we're quite long. We can always cut this again. So let's just uh, continue what I just did. I don't need to show it to you. Don't need to make this a stupid long video. You know what I'm gonna do. So let, let me set it up behind the scenes and I'll come back. Maybe I'll have a different view for you and uh, we'll finish up cutting up these few pieces of brass. Stand right. by. I hope my big fingers don't get in the way. I got really lucky. I turned that thing, I cut that much off, and it was perfect. So let's cut another one and uh, do some measurements and see how we do. Put the piece of brass in there, pull it all the way back, turn the saw on. Nice and slow. And let's measure, see what we get. It does a pretty good job. Does leave a nasty burr on there, but it comes right off with a with a uh, you know a deburr. So here we are, two thousandths longer than I wanted, but that's fine. That's all within range. I'd rather be a little long and make sure that we can trim it down than to than to cut all these down and find out I'm you know a couple thousand short. So there we go. This is all Lake City brass, and I've got a pocket full here. So we're just going to cut these really quick. And I'll put you on speedy and let you watch in speedy mode. Stand by. one worked really good no problems we got some uh, some good looking brass nice and square next step to deburr and then anneal stand by and there we go all deburred the next step is to anneal them and we'll do that right out here. I just gotta get one more thing. Stand by. And let's anneal them. I'm gonna give them about eight seconds. Uh, they're really short, so I'm not holding them with my fingers this time. It's kind of hard outside to see, so I'm going by sound. The sound is a chasing in that flame. That's just a bucket of water. And the water is just to stop the heat mitigation from getting up into the head of the case. We don't want it up in that in the head of that case. And we're just doing the, the upper one third of the case. Eight one thousand. Uh, eight uh, eight seconds might be a tad long, but let's see. We're doing a test here. We just got twenty cases, so no. Uh, that was a little bit shorter. Normally you want a straw color in your grass and it's really hard to see. That's why I like to do it in the dark.
Mm, halfway done. I know it's kind of like watching paint dry. And of course, the reason for doing this is because we're making a shoulder and a neck out of the mid, out of the mid case, and uh, you get splits and cracks and problems. This is going to make the brass softer, easier to work with, and form. And it's going to lengthen case life. It's a good idea with any bottleneck. really almost mandatory uh, with any kind of case forming. And this is just uh, just propane. I got a stand, plastic stand, and a cheapo Harbor Freight torch head because I like it better uh, hands-free. And five more to go. Three more. <clears throat> Remember to go check out JH586's channel. See what he's got to offer. And I request you give him a sub if you like what you see. He's a super guy and he just doesn't have enough subs for whatever reason. And um, this his word doesn't get out. So uh Also, uh, the Georgia Shooting Connection, Friday nights, we do uh, one video a week. It's a chat. We're all on there, and it's a really good time. So there we go. Turn that off. We got our brass in the, in the water, and uh, we'll pull it out and uh, go on to the next step, which is uh, case forming. We'll do that downstairs. Stand by. We're down here in the, in the shop. We just got our die put in the press shell hole that it came with it it's set to cam over we're going to be using imperial sizing wax this is what i always like to use whenever i'm case forming because it's pretty much fail safe all it takes is a couple of swipes with your finger get it on your case and you'll be good to go you don't need much more than that and then whatever's left on your finger, I just scrape on the inside or scrape it on the walls of the case. Slide it into your shell holder. And let's see what happens. There goes the primer. All the way down. All the way back. And we pulled the stem out. Typical for Lee. This is why I hate Lee. Now that nut, that nut was put in there extremely strongly, extremely strongly. I twisted this in there myself with quite a bit of force. So now we're gonna have to do it again. This is, uh, this is my failing with Lee and their design. This design sucks. All right, let me work on this, I'll be back. All right, I want you to look at the force that I need to apply here to get this off. Oops, I put it on tighter. Am I? No, I'm not putting it on tighter. That was under a great deal of force. Should not have come loose if it was a better design in tolerances. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, there's only two slits in there. There probably should be four. We'll put this back up in here. Let's 
this back in here. Go all the way up so we know we're not going to be too low. Because if you go too low, you can crash your pin into the base of the case, and that can be bad too. All right, so we got a tight fitting, tight fitting wrench on here. I'm gonna go stupid tight. Stupid tight, you should never need to do that. There's no reason to be that tight for a reloading die. All right, we got it out. And there's our first 22 TCM case. Now that neck looks a little bit short. Looks a little bit short to me, but I've never made one of these before. So there's what we have. We'll put a little more lube on the inside of the case and hope we can hope we can quell that in the future. But let's make some more. Stand by, I'll reset the camera. All right, a little more lube. Put it on the inside here. I'm just scraping it off my finger and I already lubed the outside and we'll do the same thing again up inside the die nice and easy there goes the primer all the way down all the way back up and there it goes looks good there we go another one sizing wax on the outside a little more on my finger rub it off my finger onto the inside of the case this will aid when we pull that mandrel back through pulling it down it'll help lubricate it there goes the primer Comes back down. There we go. And there's a 22 TCM case. Just like that. That's how you make them. I'll go through the rest of these. You know what I'm going to do. I'll come back if there's anything to see or to talk about when I'm done. Stand by. Right, there's not much data out there for. Uh, 22 TCM. I grabbed a couple of manuals and it wasn't in there, but I remembered that Lee sometimes has data with their uh, with their dies. So minimum case length trim is 1.025. So we started at 1.07. So let's see what we got for length here. Remember, I said I thought these were going to be a little bit short, but the neck looked the neck looked short to me. So let's see what we've got here. Yeah, we're short, see? 110, 1.1010. We're supposed to be 102.5. So we are, what's that? 15 thousandths. 15 thousandths short. Now this headspace is off the uh, shoulder, most likely. So we probably still have usable brass. But it's definitely short. So we're going to have to adjust our trim for at least... Well, what do we got there? We got 11. So at least uh, 10 thousandths longer. So we'll just do 20 thousandths longer because it doesn't hurt to trim it back and have nice square necks. So we'll just make it 20 thousandths longer. So we'll go from 70 to 90 or 1.1 1, 1 .1 even. You know, 1.1 1 .1 right there for an overall trim length. So you see how much you lost making that shoulder and necking it down? We lost... 10, 20, 30, 45 thousandths necking, sizing and necking, 45 thousandths. So there we go. Well, that's about it. Um, I'll decide if I'm going to use these or if I'm going to just chalk them up to experience or what I'm going to do. But uh, there's 20 pieces of brass. If it was trimmed a little bit longer, it would be 
needing final trim and then it's pretty much done um, cleaned it out uh, I could use a clean uh, I did brush out the primer pockets but it's still dirty inside so uh, probably a cleaning there you go that's making 22 TCM brass now a quick note uh, TCM and TCM 9R the brass is identical there is no difference in the brass the case or the reloading dies the difference is the overall length that it's acceptable so you got to push the bullet way back in so you got to use different bullets so that'll be next videos we'll do a little reloading i don't know if it'll be on here or if it's probably going to be on rumble because of youtube's not wanting to show manufacture so probably have to do that over there but uh, i'll let you know i'll do at least a short to tell you it's over there there we go god bless everybody cw out